Have you ever dreamt of losing excess fat without hitting the gym or going on a diet? Or perhaps you've wished for a skin that looks 10 years younger, shedding a decade of your face without resorting to a scalpel or painful injections. And of course, hair loss. Want to enjoy fullness? Sounds too good to be true? These claims are made by low-level laser therapy, also known as photobiomodulation, low-intensity laser therapy, low-level light therapy, or simply red light therapy. All synonyms are used interchangeably, making research in this topic a bit challenging. Today we will discuss the use of home devices emitting red and infrared light from an LED or a laser source. Let's talk briefly about light. And I mean really briefly because I wasn't very good in physics in school. Red light is part of the visible light spectrum. That's why when I turn on this red light therapy device, you see me completely covered in red. The infrared part of the light is invisible to the human eye. That's why you can see it on the screen, even though I turn it on. As you can see, red and infrared light, due to their different wavelengths, have different penetration depths and thereby stimulate more shallow or deeper tissue. Before I proceed, I want to emphasize that this video isn't sponsored in any way. If you found value in this content, please hit the like button and subscribe. So how do all of these devices work that are shamelessly being pushed on us on Instagram? Why does red light have healing properties? The answer is, we aren't exactly sure. Perfect. The supposed science is that red and infrared light improve mitochondrial function. Mitochondria are like tiny powerhouses inside our cells. They're responsible for producing energy, mainly in the form of a molecule called ATP, which fuels most of the cell's activities. By improving mitochondrial function, you may decrease fatigue, improve cognition and improve wound healing, and generally overall health and vitality. The best data I've seen so far on the efficiency of these devices is on skin health and rejuvenation. It seems red and infrared light stimulate the synthesis of collagen and prevent the breakdown of existing collagen in the skin, thereby effectively reducing skin wrinkling and improving the look of photo-aged skin. This increased collagen synthesis also improves wound healing and decreases scar formation after surgery. And for people with acne, red light also shows promising results, even though I would combine it with retinol or vitamin A as in this study, to improve efficacy. Let's look at some studies. This study used an LED-powered device called Omnilux Revive and included 23 participants. They received treatment for only half of their faces, the other half serving as a control, three times a week for a total of three weeks, each session lasting 20 minutes. After 8 weeks, 91% of participants reported an improvement in their skin in terms of lines, wrinkles and the perception of softer skin. However, before and after photos of the participants were then shown to uninvolved observers who could only confirm positive skin changes in 59% of patients. Objective analysis also couldn't find an improvement in skin hydration or elasticity. The same company has a device that is all over the internet. It kind of reminds me of something Leo wore in one of his movies. This device emits red light in different wavelengths, thereby offering different depths of penetration. They have two basic models. The unisex Omnilux Contour emits 633 nanometers of red light and 830 nanometers of infrared light. The device for men additionally emits 1072 nanometers of infrared light as male skin is thicker and contains more collagen. Both have a power density of 35 milliwatts per square centimeter, which describes the intensity of the light. Let's look at the study sponsored by Omnilux that tested the Omnilux device in men. The study included, drum roll please, a total of seven participants, most of them in their 30s. Participants were instructed to use the device three to five times a week for up to 10 minutes for a total duration of six weeks. Before and after photos using a special camera showed an improvement in wrinkles and UV spots. The most significant improvement was a decrease in porphyrin levels on the skin, which are bacterial excretions and cause blocked pores and thereby acne. Upon my research for red light devices, I stumbled upon this website. So this is what it felt like to be the most powerful woman of all time. It's been a power trip bossing my fiance around while wearing a mask. He has agreed that I can command him to do anything while my 15 minute session lasts, and so far, he has complied. So far, I've had him do massages, dishes, laundry, And if you want to look like the lead singer of Daft Punk, 
I recommend this device. One more time. There are a couple of devices on the market for the treatment of hair loss. A Korean one uses a combination of a medical grade laser diodes and LEDs. The wavelength of this device is 655 nanometers and the mean output is 2.56 milliwatts per square centimeter. This was tested on 60 participants, both male and female, for 16 weeks. One half of the group, however, received a sham device, meaning a device that doesn't actually work. After 16 weeks, the experimental group noticed a 58 times increase in hair growth per square centimeter and an increase in hair thickness, whereas the control group's hair thickness actually decreased. No adverse effects were noted. Two other study, one using a capillus laser cap, the other one using a medical laser in a dermatology center, also showed similar results. One after 17 weeks, the other after 52 weeks, meaning a year. The latter one even combined the capillus laser with minoxidil. If you compare the capillus laser cap to the Korean device, you can see that the red light they emit has a similar wavelength. However, the energy output is twice as high in the cap. This translates to a different treatment time. The Korean device suggests 25 minutes of treatment, whereas the capillus laser cap is done in 6 minutes. This makes comparisons between devices almost impossible. What about other uses of red light? What didn't convince me? I didn't find any good data about red light therapy improving sleep, athletic performance, pain reduction in osteoarthritis and generally back pain, even though there is no lack of websites promoting these supposedly benefits. What are my impressions after reading through hours of relatively low level scientific data, mostly published in low tier journals on red light therapy, using my free time on the weekend, time that I will never get back. As I said earlier, it seems red light has a positive effect on your skin and hair, although it might take a while for you to notice. When it comes to skin, count on at least 4 months when you do the photobiomodulation 3 times a week and for hair around 6 to 12 months. There are some challenges though with all of this research. Small study populations. I mean the study examining the effects of Omilux mask on men had 7 participants. Recruiting so few participants increases the odds that all of these results are the results of pure chance. Every study uses another device, with another wavelength, another duration of treatment and frequency. That's a problem with all these devices. They probably work, but nobody can tell for sure what the wavelength and the power density expressing milliwatts per square centimeter, aka the intensity of the treatment, should be. There are even authors claiming that there should be a specific sequencing of pulsing, meaning on and off switching of the LED in order for them to work. The studies I included in this video were placebo or sham controlled, however the majority of these studies out there aren't. Meaning the study participants sees that he gets a red light treatment which has a huge influence on their subconsciousness. I suspect a lot of these supposedly positive effects of red light therapy are pure placebo effects. Most of these studies out there are sponsored by a company that sells these devices. You may draw your own conclusion about what this means for the results. We definitely need more research in this field. However, for skin purposes, from what I've read, I think the devices work. Also the fact that no adverse effects were noted during the studies makes them safe for use at home. So, if you have a few bucks to spare and want to improve your skin and or hair, consider getting one. I will do red light therapy for the next 6 months about 1-2 to two times a week and I will let you know about my experience.